Hi, I'm Nathan W. Bingham with Ligonier Ministries. And this weekend, Ligonier has been in Princeton. They've been doing a tour here because 2023 marks the 100th anniversary of Machen's incredible work, Christianity and Liberalism. It's been a great weekend. We've had wonderful weather, but as the tour has now concluded, the rain has come in. Well, I'm joined by Steve Nichols. He is the host of Five Minutes in Church History. And Dr. Nichols, behind us in this incredible building is Alexander Hall. Right. Why is it called Alexander Hall. So this building is named for Archibald Alexander. It was built in 1812. It was the first and only building for Princeton Theological Seminary when it opened its doors. And its first professor, and in fact, he was the only professor, was Archibald Alexander. A few years in, Alexander had a very special student. His name was Charles Hodge. Hodge had been a student over at the university, was converted there during a revival, felt called to the ministry, and came here to study at the seminary. He came under the mentorship of Archibald Alexander. Of course, Hodge was a brilliant student. And so he becomes a professor here at the seminary. And not only did he train a whole generation of ministers, he also wrote his magnum opus, a three volume systematic theology that really was the textbook, not just here at Princeton, but for many seminaries and for multiple generations. So that's the, the story of the beginnings of Princeton Seminary from Alexander to Charles Hodge. Well, yesterday we had the opportunity in the library to actually see that systematic theology in Hodge's own pen. Uh, but following Hodge was B.B. Warfield. Right. And he lived just in that house just over there. He did. In fact, that house was occupied by the Hodges and then it became the Warfield house. And Warfield, of course, he, he was called the Lion of Princeton. Warfield is that stalwart figure came here in the 1890s. This is when modernism and progressivism is afoot in American culture. It is very much making inroads into the church and Warfield is seeing all of this. And Warfield goes right for that foundational doctrine and just hammers home the doctrine of inerrancy. He was a precise theologian and he gave a very clear and straightforward argument. If inspiration, if the Bible is inspired by God, then, it's true. There's a straight line from inspiration to inerrancy. And so that was Warfield. And really his whole world was here on the campus. His wife was an invalid. And so he would go from his home to his classroom there in Alexander Hall to Miller Chapel behind Alexander Hall. This was Warfield's world. Of course, through his pen and through his books and through the students he sent out into the world, his influence was far reaching. Well, following Warfield is Machen. Can you just speak a little bit about Machen's relationship with Bibi? Yeah, Machen came here, he was Warfield's student. You know, he, he very much admired Warfield and there was a close relationship between Machen and Warfield. When Warfield died, as we're moving into the 1920s, uh, the funeral service was here on the campus in the chapel. They carried Warfield's body out of the chapel and Machen says they're carrying old Princeton with him. This seminary had a three generations, about 120 year run as being the institution to stand for theological conservatism, to stand for convictional confessionalism. And Machen was recognizing that the tides had turned here at the seminary in the Presbyterian Church USA, the denomination that this seminary belongs to. And he recognized that things are now changing, but that didn't, didn't mean Machen gave up. In fact, he enters into the 1920s sort of receiving that mantle from Warfield as the defender and the contender for the faith to carry on that good fight to stand for the historic Christian faith, even in light of all the challenges of the 1920s. And so he pens Christianity and liberalism, right. 1923, obviously relevant then. Is it still relevant 100 years later in 2023? You know, I think the book is even more relevant now than it was when Machen wrote it. For one, Machen was facing a timely problem. There was a timely crisis in American culture, modernism and progressivism, and there was a timely crisis in the church. It was liberalism. But Machen answered a timely crisis with a timeless answer. And he was saying, what is it? The heart of the church is doctrine. And the problem with liberalism is a problem of particular doctrines. They weren't seeing God as holy. They weren't seeing God as sovereign. They weren't seeing Jesus as, as the God man. They certainly weren't seeing his death on the cross as a necessary substitute for sinners. They were rejecting the inerrancy of scripture. So there were particular doctrines, 
But what also concerned Machen was that the church had a doctrinal indifferentism. The, the liberalism of Machen's day thought you could have Christianity without doctrine. But all doctrine is, is the systematic expression of the teaching of the Bible. Doctrine is the teaching of the Bible. You can't have Christianity without it. And we face a similar challenge today. We face the challenge in culture. We face the challenge in the church. And, and we see it every day. How many of those in the church are willing to compromise, accommodate, really sell their birthright? And here's Machen, right? 100 years later, reminding us that doctrine matters and it is absolutely central to the church. I love the way that Machen uh, reminds us the importance of both historical fact mm. and doctrine when he says this line that Jesus died, that's history. For us, that is doctrine. So glad you brought up that line. You know, it's early on in the book and it's such a, it, it's this classic Machen. It's so precise, it's so memorably stated. But that's it, isn't it? We're, we're talking about the gospel. We're talking about who Jesus is and what he did. And, and this is a real person who died in space and time, well, lived in space and time, and died on the cross and rose again, was, was resurrected by the power of the Father and is seated at the right hand of the Father. This is the person of Christ. And that is behind the gospel of Jesus Christ. And without the gospel, there is no hope. There's no hope for us. There's certainly no hope for the world around us. And Machen reminds us that he not only died, he died for us. That's the hope of the gospel. And that's doctrine. And, and that's at the center of who we are as a church and as Christians. So what a wonderful book. Uh, what a wonderful legacy of Machen, of old Princeton. And to think that here we are a uh, hundred years later, we as Christians can still be encouraged. Actually, we can be galvanized, right? Steel in our spine to be faithful disciples and faithfully proclaim the gospel to the world in which we live. Well, Dr. Nichols, thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's always fun to be with you, Nathan, at these great spots. And what a great place to be, so rich in history. Well, if you'd like to travel with Ligonier Ministries and see some of these significant places from church history, you can learn about all the upcoming study opportunities at LigonierTours.com.